Hello everyone, welcome back to Learn Chemistry Live. Today I have come with Chapter 6 Combustion and Flame from 8th grade CBSE Science. So let's get into our chapter. Before that, I would like to show you some pictures. Have a look. Here we can see camphor, then wood, coal, petrol, matchstick and LPG gas, right? What is the common use of all these things? Yes, we can make fire from all these things, right? The process by which they produce fire is known as combustion. And in this chapter, we are going to learn about combustion in detail. So, what is the term combustion? It is nothing but the process of burning. And the substances which undergo combustion or the substances which can catch fire are known as combustible substances. For example, wood, paper, petrol, CNG, camphor, all these things can catch fire and they are known as combustible substances. While the substances which does not undergo combustion or the substances which cannot catch fire are known as non-combustible substances. For example, sand, then stones, glass, eye nails, all these things are non-combustible substances. They cannot catch fire. Okay. Now, let's look how the process of combustion happens. Combustion is an irreversible chemical process or chemical reaction in which a substance reacts with oxygen to give off heat and also light and flame. Okay, so the combustion is nothing but it is a reaction of a substance with oxygen and it is an irreversible chemical process. What do you mean by the term irreversible? Let's take the example of burning paper. If you are burning a piece of paper, you will get ash, right? And can you get back the paper from that ash? No, it's not possible, right? So such a kind of process in which you cannot get back the original substance in its original state are known as irreversible process and combustion is an irreversible process so once you burn a combustible substance you cannot get back that combustible substance in its original state so the combustion is an irreversible process so in combustion there will be a fuel which will react with oxygen at a definite amount of heat and that produces fire okay so this is the process of combustion now, let's look at the factors which contributes towards combustion. The first factor is fuel. That is a combustible substance. It can be in any state, like if it is in solid state, it can be wood, paper, etc. And it can be in liquid state like petrol, diesel, kerosene, etc. And it can be also in gaseous state like LPG, CNG, etc. Okay, so fuel can be a combustible substance in any state which can react with oxygen. Okay, now the second factor we need is heat or a flame we need to induce this combustion. And the third factor that is a major factor contributing towards combustion and it is oxygen. We know that the combustion is a reaction of a substance with oxygen, right? So unless and until there is no supply of oxygen, combustion cannot happen. So the major factor that contributes towards combustion is oxygen or air. Okay, now let's look at another term that is ignition temperature. It is the lowest temperature at which a substance catches fire and different combustible substances will have different ignition temperatures. For example, if you are taking the case of diesel, its ignition temperature is 210 degrees Celsius. It means that diesel will burn itself at a temperature of 210 degrees Celsius. Okay. And uh, the case of phosphorus, its ignition temperature is 35 degrees Celsius. It means that phosphorus will start burning at a temperature of 30 35 degrees Celsius. That is the room temperature, right? So we have to keep phosphorus out of contact with oxygen. So it is usually kept in kerosene. Okay. And the substances which have very low ignition temperature and can easily catch fire are known as inflammable substances. So they inflammable substances will have very low ignition temperature and they can catch fire very easily. Okay. Now let's look at an activity that is given in your textbook. It is instructed us to make two paper cups and you should fill one paper cup with some water and the other paper cup is kept empty. Then 
introduced both these paper cups towards lighted candles at the same time. Which paper cup will burn first? Yes, with no doubt you can tell that the empty paper cup will catch fire as soon as it is introduced to the candle flame, right? But it will take more time for the water containing paper cup to catch fire. What is the reason? Yes, once it is brought into candle flame, the heat given to the paper cup containing water is transferred to the water first. And hence it takes more time to reach the ignition temperature of paper. So it will burn slowly. It will burn only after the complete water inside that paper cup is vaporized. Okay. Now let's look at different types of combustion. Mainly there are three types of combustion. Let's see them one by one. First is rapid combustion. This kind of combustion happens only by the application of some external source. We need to apply some external source for rapid combustion to happen. And this combustion happens so rapidly, that is so fast it happens and it produces heat and light. And the example is LPG, that the cooking gas that we use at home. Okay, so we have to introduce a flame or uh, a spark to start that combustion and it will happen so fast. So such kind of combustion is known as rapid combustion. And the second kind of combustion is known as spontaneous combustion. This kind of combustion happens very fast. It suddenly bursts out without the application of any external source that we don't need any kind of external source to start spontaneous combustion. The example given here is sodium and potassium. These two elements when they are kept in contact with air, they can burn itself. No heat, no flame or no, no uh, external source is required for them to start burning. So such kind of materials or such kind of combustion is known as spontaneous combustion. Okay. And the third kind of combustion, this is very much familiar to you, that is explosion. It's a very sudden combustion that happens with the production of heat, light and also big sound. And it happens as an effect of large chemical reaction happening. Okay. And the examples are fireworks, bomb blasts. Okay. So the explosion is happening in fireworks and bomb blasts. It is a very sudden combustion and it produces very much amount of heat, light and sound. Okay. Now, let's look at the various fire outbreaks that can happen and the methods to control these fire outbreaks. So we have already told that there are three major factors that contributes towards combustion, right? What are they? Fuel, then oxygen and heat. These are the three major factors that contribute towards combustion. So by removing or eliminating these factors, we can bring down the amount of combustion. Okay, so let's look different instances in which fire outbreaks can happen and let's look at the methods used to control them. So the first instance given here is a person's cloth catches fire. So what can we do? Just cover the, that person with a wet blanket. So what is the element removed here? So once a person's cloth catches fire, you will cover him with a wet blanket and thereby you can cut down the contact of oxygen with that cloth so it will stop burning okay and the second instance given here is fire outbreak which happens in house shops or small factories so when there is a fire outbreak in house shops or small factories what can you do just spray water with high pressure so once you spray water the heat is eliminated the heat is reduced and you can bring down the amount of combustion in such cases okay the third instance given here is fire outbreak at petrol pumps petrol is highly inflammable right so you cannot spray water in this case if you spray water it will form suspension uh, with the petrol and it will cause severe combustion so uh, the method you adopt here is to throw sand by throwing sand you can remove the oxygen coming in contact with petrol okay so that is the method that we use one 
once fire outbreak happens in petrol pumps okay now the fourth example given here is fire from electrical equipments if there is electrical equipments fire a fire outbreak happens we cannot uh, use water because there will be shock right so we usually use fire extinguisher so fire extinguisher when we use we get the supply of carbon dioxide along with water so the carbon dioxide can eliminate oxygen and also we can bring down the heat in such cases okay then the last example given here is forest fire so when forest fire happens we can spray either water or uh, we can spray water and also bury down the woods so by spraying water we can reduce the amount of heat and also by burying the woods we can remove the fuel okay so these are the ways in which we control the fire outbreaks in various instances okay now let's look at fire extinguisher you might have seen this right so uh, you may not know how to use this so there is a short form pass let's see each words pass p a s s the first letter p indicates pull the pin so at the top of this fire extinguisher there will be a pin you have to pull it first okay the second thing you have to do is aim the base of the fire so once you have pulled the pin then you have to aim that fire extinguisher towards the base of that base of fire then the third thing you have to do is to push or squeeze the lever there will be a lever at the top of this fire extinguisher you have to squeeze it so that carbon dioxide will be coming from that nozzle then you have to sweep the fire extinguisher side to side along that fire so this is the uh, this is the way that you have to use this fire extinguisher okay so now with this topic we have covered the topic combustion and we are left with the topic flame in this chapter so that topic we will be discussing in our next class so hope you have you all have understood this topics if you have any doubts please ask in the comment box i will be answering it thank you